Well, good afternoon, or rather good morning. Um, I'm Scott Higgins, an Army veteran, Vietnam veteran, and co-founder of Veterans Advantage. And on behalf of Veterans Advantage, I want to welcome you to our second streaming Heroes Meet Heroes, where U.S. veteran heroes meet our U.S. Olympic heroes. So just so you know, all the participants in the audience are muted to eliminate the background sound. And I want to thank you all for, for joining us. So tomorrow's Veterans Day, and before we begin, we want to give a big shout out to all the veterans and their family members in the audience today. We'll also give a shout out to our Marines in the audience too, because today, November 10th, marks the 246th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. So today is a special day and time for celebration. We want to thank all the vets and their family members for your service to the country and for preserving the freedoms that we enjoy. So to get started with our event, um, our Heroes Meet Heroes was created nine years ago by Lynn Higgins, my co-CEO and co-founder at Veterans Advantage. Many of you have met her. She also doubles as my beautiful and brilliant spouse. So I wanna thank you, Lynn. I also wanna thank all the talented members of our Veterans Advantage team who've worked so hard on this live streaming event. A big thanks, thanks goes out to Roy Aspar, Corey Robeson, Rebecca Martin, Angela McFarlane, and Janie Harrison for organizing this event. So for the last seven years, or rather for seven years, we've hosted this event in the trophy room of the New York Athletic Club in New York City. Many of you have been there. The New York AC is the largest club in the nation for training US Olympians and sending them to the Olympics. The concept behind Heroes Meet Heroes is for our Veterans Advantage members to meet these outstanding American athletes and likewise for the Olympians to honor our veteran heroes. And while this event looks different this year due to the pandemic, we really gather in the same spirit and we hope to return to the New York AC for this wonderful, wonderful event uh, next year. I want to thank some of our sponsors, special thanks to our lead sponsor, Northrop Grumman and Sanders Sandra Evers Manley, the president of the Northrop Grumman Foundation, who has supported this event for many years. Northrop Grumman is a leader in employing veterans. Actually, 20% of their 85,000 employees are veterans, and more than 1,600 are reservists. Also, thanks to Sandra, Northrop Grumman is a leader in diversity and inclusion. So, Sandra, we can't thank you enough. Also joining us as sponsors this year, as uh, they did last year, Caliber Home Loans. Brian Bergian is the National Director of Military and VA Lending and Navy Reservists. He's also a panelist for our virtual event at 6.30 uh, today. Caliber Home Loans, I can tell you, is really the place to go for a VA loan. They're terrific. Also, big thanks to Agent Budget and the talented team there, led by Senior VP Stephen Wright. For many years, Avis Budget has advocated for veterans and veterans advantage with exclusive discounts. And joining us again as a sponsor is 1-800-Flowers and its family of brands. Jim McCann is the chairman and a friend and a founder that makes sure that our Vet Rewards subscribers receive 30% off their flower orders, the very same discount they offer their employees. It's really great. I want to thank IMAX and their CEO, Rich Gelfond, for donating 500 tickets to an IMAX movie, two each uh, for the first 250 who are attending today, and then another 250 uh, will receive it um, for this afternoon at the 631. Also, American Airlines, thanks to David Seymour, our friend, and the Chief Operating Officer, and Loretta Joano, our corporate sales specialist, they're donating two um, free tickets uh, anywhere in the U.S. and the Caribbean, um, anywhere in the, the lower 48, I should add. So there'll be we're gonna we're gonna have a uh, a drawing, uh, and we'll more about that later. And to Dell, who's donating two free Dell computers, thanks to Chris Pringle at Dell, um, and that sort of rounds it out. But lastly, I want to give a special shout out uh, to our patriotic sponsor and 501c3 partner, Four Block. Uh, and a shout out to, to their founder, Mike Abrams, who's a Marine. Um, we're deeply honored to have these sponsors and on behalf of them, each one of you attending our event today will receive a free one year subscription to Vet Rewards. So our Vet Rewards subscribers will also be getting a real thank you tomorrow for Veterans Day from our partner, Wendy's. So make sure you go to Wendy's before 10.30 tomorrow morning and you show your card, you get a free Veterans Day breakfast combo 
And also be sure to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and show your Vet Rewards card for this exclusive. In the next two days, you'll get 25% off everything. Woo. Anyway, so anyway, let's go to our panelists. We're going to... Um, we're gonna to start today by going around to greet each of our panelists. Um, and I'm going to tell you something about each of their amazing accomplishments. And then I'll ask them to tell them something, tell us something more about, about their background. Um, and then for the second part of this, we're going to open the floor to the Q and A sessions. And everyone attending tonight or today is muted, so we can't hear you. But if you press the icon at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions, I'll present them to our panelists. Okay, so first up uh, is actually um, our guest of honor, and that's Paul Bud Buca. And with good reason, he's our best of honor, uh, our guest of honor, because he is a recipient of the Medal of Honor, which is our nation's highest military award. Uh, Bud is a distinguished graduate of West Point, a U.S. Army captain, and a Vietnam veteran, also a ranger. Uh, he's an all-American swimmer. He was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame and the Ranger Hall of Fame. Bud's a successful businessman and a longtime member of, of our Veterans Advantage Advisory Board, married to a wonderful spouse, Cynthia. So Bud, go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background and, and uh, things I know that our, 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 our audience will be Anxious to know. And having been introduced years and years and years ago for the first time and say, I am going to do something that I have not had the privilege of doing in the past. And that is that on behalf of the veterans, uh, I want to just, and their families, I want to make sure we all say thank you to Scott and Lynn. Uh, we are fortunate that there are people like Scott and Lynn who don't forget veterans, especially between the holidays. They are always, every week, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas week or a non-identified week, every week Scott has announcements of benefits and things that they have been doing for the veterans and their families. And as a friend of Scott and Lynn's, uh, but more importantly in this case, as a veteran, um, I would just like to thank you on behalf of my kids, my wife, and all of our friends who are veterans and their families to Scott and Lynn, thank you very much for all you've done for us. And it never ceases to amaze me that you can keep coming up with things like, <laughs> what was it 25 cents off of Wendy's? <laughs> it's just fantastic. And so me to you and the greater veteran community, thank you. Well, I appreciate that, bud. Appreciate your comments. And uh, I'd like to also introduce Rich Jones, who uh, is joining us tonight. Uh, today, Rich uh, is a U.S. Army veteran, uh, executive vice president, and chief veteran officer of Viacom CBS, um, which employs nearly a thousand uh, veterans with Rich at the helm. Um, Rich graduated from the Ranger School and served in both the 75th Ranger Regiment and the 10th Mountain Division as a squad leader. Um, after four years in the military, his career was um, ended due to an injury, and Rich transitioned into a successful career in business after earning his law degree. He now oversees all of Viacom CBS's veteran outreach and messaging efforts. And this month, he was elected to the chair of the Office of Veterans and Military Affairs at his alma mater, Syracuse um, University. Rich, thanks for joining us. I'll turn it over to you now to share a little bit more about yourself and your background and how the military's prepared you for success in business. Scott, uh, thank you so much. I, I, I echo Bud's uh, comments and I, I just want to say thank you to uh, our panelists. And, you know, uh, this this event means so much to me. And it, 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 you know, Bud often says that military service is, you know, uh, is an expression of the finest, it, it, it's it's the, the finest of our citizenship, right? It, it's it's the exemplar, and you know I would say that I've never forgotten where I've come from. You know I remember my my first day at Fort Benning, and that 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 has driven me uh, through through every phase of my life. Uh, I was so proud to have served, as you mentioned. I I, I was an enlisted guy. Um, I rose to the rank of uh, of staff sergeant. I was very fortunate to have served um, in the Ranger Regiment uh, and uh, uh, reactivated the 10th Mountain Division. Uh, and then 
uh, you know, that was, I was a career soldier. And then uh, having been injured, uh, spent a year at Walter Reed and uh, recovering and, and having, you know, suffered a lot of the uh, uh, physical injury and, and what, what that taught me and how it, it, it helps me today in the business world, as you mentioned, you know, it's not easy. And so I think overcoming adversity and, 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 and continuing to work through, uh, you know, difficulties and, and most importantly, uh, to, to stay connected to our military family. You know, the, the people who get me through the toughest days continue to be um, uh, the military and veteran family. Uh, so I'm, I'm continued, and, and let me say, with, 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 with our Olympians, uh, and, you know, when we talk about inspiration uh, 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 to serve, right? I think what I continue to do, what we continue to do, is to inspire service, military service. And again, this is, I'm, I'm quoting Bud, I, I need to pr provide uh, royalties for this, but you know, military service is one aspect of service to our nation. And at a time when we need more service uh, in our communities to continue to make uh, allow this co country uh, to, 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 uh, to, to achieve its greatness, um, yeah, I'm just very proud to continue to be part of that. Oh. Well, thank you, Rich. We appreciate that very much. I'd like to introduce okay. Scott Fusco to you. Um, Scott is a former American ice hockey player. He uh, attended Belmont Hill School before going to Harvard. And at Harvard, he was a two-time All-American and won the Hobie Baker Award in 1986. He's also a member of the American 1984 Winter Olympics ice hockey team a tough team uh, to follow the 1980, I'll say that. He was inducted into the United States Hockey Hall of Fame in 2002. And uh, I'm reading from his Wikipedia here, he was assistant coach of the Irish national hockey team. He's also a founder and owner of The Edge, which is a Northwest Boston state-of-the-art athletic recreational facility for athletes of all ages. Many of you may have heard of this. The facility hosts an incredible number of youth ath athletes. I guess it's two over a quarter of a million every year and over nearly 100,000 adult athletes um, every year. So Scott, tell us how sports and hockey in particular has helped you in your professional career. Oh, thanks, Scott. Thanks for the, the introduction. Uh, first, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, listening to the bios of the panelists, um, I'm sort of humbled by what other people have accomplished. Um, when they look at my bio, it's, you know, I was a hockey player and I, ne I didn't go into hockey to, to do great things. Or I did it because it was fun and I happened to, you know, get to a level where I was honored to play for our country and, and I was happy to do that. And I was had the opportunity to do that, you know, several different times, which was great. Um, and, you know, after a business career, I sort of got back into sports and, and now I'm having a great time, you know, dealing with youth sports. We mostly deal with, with kids ages, you know, six to 18. Um, and it's fun to sort of see the struggles they're going through and, and helping them sort of achieve their goals. So all that's been good. Um, I, mean, I think the, the biggest thing I've sort of learned uh, along my Olympic journey is, you know, you need to get up every day and go to work. You know, we, you think sometimes things are good, sometimes they're not so good. You know, a lot of success, a lot of failures. And at the end of the day, you, you get through it. And, you know, you, you, you basically, you know, show up to the ranks, strap your helmet on, go to work, work out whatever problems you have, and hopefully take a step forward. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that we all deal with in all aspects of our life. You may have a, a meeting or something you're not looking forward to, but you prepare for it. The game day, you know, game day arrives, you, you, you participate, you get through it, and you move on. And I think, you know, that's sort of served me well as I've gone through all these different things. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> Thank you, Scott. I want to introduce um, and delighted to have Priscilla Loomis here with us today. She's an Olympic high jumper and uh, it, it, she's got a, she's wearing a beautiful hat uh, and she, <laughs> a, she, she carries a dual citizenship from Antigua and America and she competed in the 2016 Olympic Games as a high jumper representing Antigua. She's also a very accomplished business owner, a fitness trainer and an advocate and a motiv motivational speaker. She um, inspires others to accomplish their goals and speak their truth. Thanks for joining us, Priscilla. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. to have you. I'd love to hear more about your dream to become an Olympic athlete, what you've sacrificed. 
Yes, absolutely. And so um, I kind of echo Scott a little bit. I came out into track and field because I had a lot of energy and I started at six years old. So my mom just needed to put me in something that would get my energy out and I would be able to sleep at the end of the day. Like that was how it all started. And so I've been on this journey and it has been absolutely incredible. I went to the 2012 US trials um, and I was seated 24 out of 24 and placing seventh, I realized what hard work and commitment and dedication can get me. So, you know, I went on this journey to be an entertainer. I went to St. John's University, love being in New York. And so now I was able to use track and field as a way to entertain the masses. And so now I officially retired this past August. Uh, I was supposed to go to this Olympics, but unfortunately I got COVID in January and it kind of derailed the, the journey a little bit, but track and field has given me so much. I mean, because of certain circumstances, I had to start my own business, which made me an entrepreneur, which I'm super grateful for. I, rather than asking for a way in, I made a way for myself. So it made me really resilient and courageous, spontaneous and fearless. And so I'm very, very grateful for that yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Um, I'm a podcast host and I have a uh, podcast with my husband talking college football because I love college football, you know, and so now I work as um, a marketing, you know, manager for a new company and it allows me to go out into the field and kind of interact with a lot of different people and sell liquor. So, you know, it's all these kinds of different things and I still have my business. So it's been an amazing journey and I wouldn't be where I am today without track and field and without New York Athletic club and so I do I do owe so much to the club for believing in me and for continuously supporting me so I hope to be a beacon of light and positivity for every person that I interact with and that's something that track definitely has given me and I'm very blessed to have thank you Priscilla inspirational as always <laughs> um want to introduce to you Mark <laughs> sorry um I want to also introduce Mark Mayberry. Um, he is Stanley Black and Decker's first chief technology officer. Um, Mark served as a US Air Force officer before spending 27 years with the Mitra company. He later returned to the Air Force as chief scientist uh, from 2010 to 2013, where he advised the chief of staff and the secretary of the Air Force on a wide range of scientific and technical issues. He's currently a board member on the Defense Science Board, the Mark Twain House, and the Museum Board and the Connecticut Science uh, Center Board. He also served previously multiple years of service on the Air Force Scientific Advisory Board and the Homeland Security Science and Technology Advisory Committee. He's a fellow in both the IEEE and the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. So Mark, we'd love to hear more about your background, which is so impressive and how the Air Force has impacted your professional life. Well, well Scott, you know, I'd like to echo the others appreciation, uh, you know, for you uh, and your wife's incredible uh, support for veterans. Uh, our, our veterans are oftentimes, uh, you know, in the best of times, they're, they're recognized and heralded. Uh, same goes for Olympians. Uh, but in the worst of times, unfortunately, they aren't as supported as they should be. And so particularly this week, when we celebrate uh, all of their accomplishments, I, I'm just so, so grateful uh, for all that, that your organization does to recognize the veterans. Um, I have so much to be appreciative uh, from the Air Force. They literally paid for, uh, as an ROTC graduate, for my undergraduate education. Um, I got my first jet flight, uh, you know, in that training. Um, I had an incredible experiences flying and everything from a U-2 uh, to a, 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 a bomber uh, to uh, a, a F-16. Uh, so I, I've, I've really uh, benefited tremendously uh, but probably the most meaningful things are being with veterans on the front lines. I had the privilege in 2003 to spend some time as a civilian supporting uh, the Coalition Provisional Authority, uh, literally in the middle of a war zone. And, uh, um, uh, and watching the true heroes uh, with their discipline and their dedication, dedication and literally their willingness to give their lives for the freedoms we enjoy every day is nothing short of inspiring. Um, and so... 
Um, again, so much to be grateful for. I, I have to make a shout out. Uh, you know, I, I've had the privilege of working in Scott's or Scott Fusco's organization for a number of years uh, as a hockey coach and just observing, uh, I think, not only he, his personal uh, dedication, but also uh, the others who are committed to the development of the next generation. Um, and and it, it strikes me that there are a number of commonalities between our veterans and our Olympians. Um, the Olympians and the veterans all are incredibly mission oriented. They're dedicated. As Scott said, you know, you get up some days, it's a bad day or a good day. You get up, you make your bed, you get to the office or to the rink and you do your job. So that discipline, that hard work, and also importantly, the commitment to team. You know, yes, you know, it's amazing to have Olympians, but when you bring them together as a team, that right. Team USA, uh, that's just uh, an incredible sight to see. And then finally, you know, their commitment to, to the duty and the, and the honor of their country. Um, so I, I just, again, have so much to be grateful for. Thank you for what you do. We have a thousand veterans at Stanley Black & Decker. I'm privileged to serve as the executive sponsor of both our veterans and our abilities employee resource groups. And, and th this week, we're literally celebrating uh, uh, all of our veterans uh, like you're, you're doing here because they, they're, they're so important uh, to our country and, and also to our future. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Words of wisdom. I'd also like to introduce, uh, lastly, John Mann, who's an Olympic water polo player. Thanks for joining us, John. He's originally from California. Uh, John attended UC Berkeley, where he had a distinguished college career playing water polo, and he led his team to the NCAA championships in 2006, graduated with the second most goals in the school's history, and received an important award, the Peter J. Coutinho Award, the most prestigious award in collegiate water polo. He's a two-time Olympian competing in both the 2012 London and the 2016 Rio Games, and he also represented the U.S. in the Pan American Games, the FINA World Championships, cups and league competition. So John, it's a pleasure to have you here. And we're excited to hear more about your background and how you became an Olympian. Thanks, Scott. Um, it's just really an honor to be here today. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right, I, after a year, a year and a half here to Zooms, I always check on that because I've started a few times where no one no one's hearing me. So <laughs> uh, save you guys the story twice. I just wanted to check. You know, uh, thank you for that great introduction. Uh, again, it's an honor to be here. Um, you know, I started off, uh, water polo was really the, uh, the cool sport growing up by the coast here in California. The rest of our sports weren't any good and I like to win. So that was kind of the way yeah. I started playing. Uh, my, <clears throat> I guess I could say I was, I, was uh, I guess, a bit brainwashed growing up because my, my folks always talked about how 84 in Los Angeles during the games was the best time ever in Los Angeles. So growing up down here in Southern California, uh, early age, the Olympics were the pinnacle of the history of the great city that, you know, I grew up in for most of my life. So, uh, you know, that I wanted to be an Olympian and then also kind of chose a small sport that was the cool sport in my town. And before I knew it, I was, I was playing, uh, overseas and, and uh, internationally for eight years across, you know, the Mediterranean professionally. And I had just some great opportunities to meet some people around the world and, uh, you know, live in some of the places that people say, you know, obviously say, hey, uh, you know, something happens here or something there, or decisions are made, we're going to move to a different country. Well, I lived in some of those wonderful countries they're talking about, and there's no place like this great country. This is the greatest country on the planet. And I, I'm just so proud and thankful that I have, uh, you know, I continue to have the opportunity to chase my dreams and goals uh, because uh, a lot of great individuals or brave individuals uh, make the choice to protect our freedoms and our rights. And, uh, you know, you, you all uh, are the heroes and I, I just feel very fortunate. Um, now I, I work in financial services. Um, I have a team here, uh, Olympic private client group at Oppenheimer and uh, you know, we have uh, veterans on, on the team, uh, a young Marine that's joined us and grooming him to become a financial advisor. He's fantastic. And uh, it's really, if, if I can meet, uh, you know, veterans or, uh, you know, athletes, I want them around me because they're just high quality people. And, and just, yeah, thanks again for having me. Oh, thanks, John, for joining us. That's terrific. Uh, now we'd like to start the Q&A portion of, of, of this. Um, 
And as a reminder, if you press the icon at the bottom of the screen, uh, you can submit a question and um, you know, we'll see them and present them to our guests. Just make sure you submit your question that if your question is specifically addressed to one of them, then you should include their name in your question. Um, otherwise, I'll sort of direct it. Uh, we have one here. What advice could you give to us veterans who got injured in service and now can no longer do their past jobs and hobbies? How do you stay motivated and find something else to do with your life? I'd like to direct that to Rich but others after he speaks could certainly join in. This is an important question. Yeah, Scott, um, uh, to uh, the veteran who's asking this question, I will tell you, you look at me, okay? And you'd say, wow, here's a guy who, you know, is a, a corporate officer at a Fortune uh, 100 company. He's a this and he's in a that. But I'll tell you the thing that people don't know, okay, I broke almost every bone, every major bone in my body. I suffer every single day. Um, I'm in pain. There are days where I can't sleep. Um, psychologically, it takes its toll. I, I, I suffer. I, I readily acknowledge that. Um, so, and I, and, and, and I just have my neck rebuilt. I, you know, thanks to the surgeons at, at Lenox Hill in May, I had uh, all of the vertebra in my neck uh, the, 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 they were replaced. I have, I have, uh, replacement discs of titanium that were, they cut through my neck here in the front, move my, my, my vocal cords and my, uh, uh, everything this way and the carotid artery this way. And then they went in with their tools, uh, to, 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 to do the surgery and, and, and they fused my, my thoracic spine to my, my, with my cervical spine. Um, I say this because you you would not know that, okay? And I think it's important. Is is, is and so everyone is is dealing with a challenge. I, I this is something that is so important. So every day, uh, it's hard. Get up, as many of the pallets have said. You know it's hard, but you know uh, make sure that you're getting the right treatment uh, physically. There are so many good doctors, uh, and again, if I can be a resource to help, uh, this is something physical. Uh, uh, wellness, mental wellness is something that I practice every day purposefully because otherwise it can lead to bad outcomes. And so um, uh, obviously every injury is, is, is unique and different, but I will just tell you, hang in there, find the support. The, the love of family and friends is, is, is can't be, be uh, overstated, uh, staying within a community. But every day is, a, listen, every day is a struggle, but you only have to get through this evolution. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be a better day. So just stay strong, get the right care. Um, and, and I will tell you the advancements. I've lived with, with injury. The, the technology is, is advancing in such a way that many, you know, especially with pain management, um, many, many things. Uh, uh, so I would just say, uh, the, use us as a, uh, you know, again, you can reach out to me, uh, richard.jones at viacomcbs.com. Uh, you know, you can reach out to Scott and Lynn and Roy and they can put us in touch and I, I, I will make sure to provide you this, any information that, that can be helpful with, with, with your journey. Yeah. Priscilla, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I think, um, I mean, Rich really said it best. I think when you have a really great um, line of resources, I think that really helps because what happens is people say that they'll support you and they'll help you and then they kind of disappear. So I think everyone here on this panel is open to helping in any way possible. So with my foundation right now, we're still in the early stages, but we're starting, you know, scholarships for eighth graders, but we are going to start a division for veterans and somebody like Rich, I'm going to email him and say, Hey, I'm not, a, you know, a veteran, but I want to be able to help in the best possible way. So how can my smaller foundation help people in that kind of sense? And so you want to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people every day. And I mean, I have been injured and I've had to come back from it and I've been down, I've been out, I've been the underdog, you know, getting COVID, you know, missing my, you know, missing my goals, all of that kind of stuff. But the one thing that an Olympian can say is that it's practice. It's every single day. So it wasn't every day that we woke up and we were like, yay, let's go. It's the best day ever. There are hard days, 
but we are stronger people. So we have to be stronger than you know, our, I guess our quote unquote problems or issues. So every day it's a work, it's a work ethic. So every day I have it right next to me. I have a journal. I have to write out things that I'm grateful for. I have to remind myself that I'm strong. I, it's a practice. It's something that we have to do. And I have to stay connected with good people that I surround myself with. So there are different, there are many different things that we could do, but just make sure that you're concentrating on yourself and making sure that you are staying positive because you are strong. You are courageous. You've been through so much. So so whatever you need to do to help yourself, do it. That's what's most important. You are important and you need to give yourself 110% every single day. Thanks, Priscilla. As being a Marine Corps veteran, I find it very, very hard to find a job and it gets me down and depressed. Is there something I can do to get motivated to keep me moving forward? <clears throat> Bud, do you want to? Uh, I think you're you're muted. <clears throat> oh, it looks like we're all. Are we muted? You you were muted. Yeah. Can, that can you hear me now? Yeah. Did you hear the question? No, I did not. Okay. The question is: As being a Marine Corps veteran, I find it very hard to find a job, and it gets me down and depressed. Is there something I can do to get motivated to keep moving forward? It's, it's strange. They, right now, we're looking at a situation where there are 12 million unfulfilled jobs. 12 million. There's no reason in the world why someone can't have an income if they want it now. Each and every one of you brings a particular uh, skill set to the table and to the marketplace. Each and every one of you is a leader. And that's what you have that separates you from everyone else. Athletes are leaders. They have to be. Everything that they do is intended to make life easier for those that follow. It's a, it's a tremendous opportunity we all have as athletes to join with the leaders who are military and try to put together these brackets that you were talking about doing, Priscilla, where you want to say, how can I help? For the Marine guy that's on the phone, the Marine veteran, yeah. do not give up. Do not think that today is the last day. Do not think that everyone has the right answer. They don't. The first place to find the right answer to the issues that confront you is in your heart. That is the most important thing that you can remember. And don't ever forget the family. Sometimes it, all it takes is for you to ask someone, I've got a problem. And they might just stop and say, what's your problem? It's now our problem. And you never know who's going to be that person. It just takes someone to stop and say, what about you? So live hard, live optimistically, make sure that you understand that the power of a smile goes a long, long way, no matter what's bothering you. And the enlightenment that can come from having someone stand side by side with you as you confront the problems it might be the thing that you've been looking for from the day you were born. So be positive, be strong, remember to smile, stand tall, and under all circumstances, all circumstances, understand you look in that mirror and you got a partner. <laughs> Believe in me. Thank, Thank you. you. So Scott, if I could just uh, uh, augment. We have 1,500 open positions across America. I know this is not an advertisement for Stanley Black and Decker, but if you like Craftsman, if you like DeWalt, if you like any of our great tools and you want to be join our team, um, and we're not alone. We have half a million unfilled positions in manufacturing. We're bringing manufacturing back to America. So um, I think um, the opportunities, just to echo the previous point, are just... Uh, uh, amazing all across America right now. This is this is the time to get 
back into the job market, into ECHO. You know, I mentioned we have a thousand veterans working. We actively recruit veterans. Why? Uh, because they're disciplined, because they're good communicators, because they know how to motivate people, because they're leaders, they understand vision, they're committed, right? They're, they're high, we have higher retention rates with, with, with our veterans. Uh, we have higher productivity with our veterans, higher commitment. These are things that you can't buy. Uh, they're incredibly valuable. So I, I would encourage all the veterans out there. And I, I have to make a comment, you know, in terms of, I do appreciate the physical and the mental challenges that many vets have to overcome. One of my heroes, personal heroes, is uh, Pooch, uh, Lieutenant Commander John Puccillo, a Naval War College veteran who went overseas and lost a leg to an IED. Yeah. And tr trust me, when he tells his, he, he gave a great TEDx talk at the Pentagon, you can see it online, I encourage you to, to hear his story. It's just an amazing story. He came back to America and what did he do? He joined the Joint Improvised Defeat Organization to help counter the very things that, uh, that uh, dramatically changed his life. He initiated himself his own nonprofit uh, called uh, Operation uh, Blue uh, um, uh, 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 C, which is basically a, a, a program that, uh, Operation Blue Pride, pardon me, that's a program that brings injured vets to learn to scuba dive. Uh, and trust me, I have dove, dove with Pooch. If you dive with someone who's only got one leg and they outperform you, um, it puts a new level of respect uh, to, to, the, to the strength and the perseverance of these veterans. And I would echo probably our athletes too. Um, and so I just encourage people, uh, don't, you know, get up, get out there and ask for help. There are people who are, who are able and willing to help you get connected to your future. Very good. Thank you. Um, yes. Scott? Yes. Can I make just one little thing? I just wanted to bring up, um, Sue, Rich, and Scott, I was asked to speak about PTS. Not PTSD, because D is a disorder, PTS, uh, years ago, because I have it. And we thought it might help vets and their families who right now think they're alone facing this kind of an issue. Now you read and see a lot of advertising about cognitive impairment, meaning where you can't quite be what you once were. You've got to understand that you're not alone, though. I have it. And it is, doesn't, there's no quick fix to it. You take some medicine. You have to have discipline. You have to do simple things that you didn't do yet last week or the year before that because you didn't have it. But now when you have this cognitive impairment, you've got to have the guts to stand up and say, I will not let this get me. And I can just tell you from my pers personal place, I turn to people like Scott and Lynn, like Rich, people that have been there, my family, and I ask them to bear with me and lend a hand. So don't let these maladies get you down. Stand up and say, I can do this. And Veterans Advantage is a place to start. If you ever need help from someone on the outside, you go to Veterans Advantage, they will be your partner and they will make sure that it all goes well. So remember, you're not alone. We all have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bud. So I'm working remote full time for the last year. I rely on the patients that I support to get me through the day and to do the best I can uh, with them. How do you motivate yourselves to still do the best you can regardless of how you feel? Scott, do you want to tackle that one? Uh, <clears throat> sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, the more you can connect with people, um, you know, the more you can sort of fight those feelings, um, you know, get up, get out of the house. I mean, you're working remote. That doesn't mean you can't see people at a coffee shop. You can't, you know, meet with people, um, you know, arrange meetings. You know, talk to people, just get out and get out and social life, socialize as much as possible. And I think the more structure you put to these kind of things, you know, the, the better off you are. <clears throat> Maybe have a goal of, you know, getting out there two or three times a week. Um, 
<clears throat> you don't have to talk about work. You can talk about family. You can talk about hobbies, or you know, maybe even you know, join a group that you know, a walking group or a fitness group or you know, some other kind of thing you're interested in, just to interact with, with people and make it sort of a consistent part of your day and make it an important part of your day. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my veteran friends and I would like to see the draft reinstated for men and women. Uh, everyone serves at least a year, either in the military or in some form of public service. Any thoughts from the panel? Scott, I'll, I'll kick it off. I, I think that service is important, but um, I do believe that, uh, you know, we, we've had all volunteer uh, military for um, almost four decades. And um, I do think that uh, people who willingly uh, go into service, I think that that is particularly for unit cohesion. I think that, that um, you know, again, I, I think it's also the case when you look at the numbers of somebody who works uh, closely with, with uh, DOD on the recruiting mission, we do a lot to, to encourage, uh, um, you know, young people to serve. But, you know, it's a startling statistic that even if we were to uh, put a draft in place, um, I think it's something like if you, you cut through, you know, uh, you know, all of the qualifications and the inclination, it's only 2% of the military, military aged personnel are, 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 are either motivated to or qualified to serve. So I think, I think there'd be huge, huge issues uh, with that. Uh, I'd rather have a small cadre of highly committed, um, you know, with, with, with uh, you know, again, high aptitude, you know, with, with good ASVAB scores, um, you know, service is important. Uh, I, 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 I don't know that uh, personally, um, I think it's, it, 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 it's a nice thought, but the, the implementation could be disastrous for our readiness. Okay, thank you. Anything you wanna to add to that, Bud, or no? <clears throat> well, I have, quite, I have another question for you. Uh -oh. um, and it, and it comes from um, a gentleman here who says, Paul, how did you end up with the nickname Bud? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, just John, you might get a kick. I, I was a water polo player at West Point and I was with, at Stanford. I was the assistant coach with Jimmy Smith and Jim Gorin. And um, so I've learned a lot about the sports that you all have and that you've ex excelled at. The most important thing that I, I can say is that I think um, each and every day is a gift. You can use that gift to listen to your downtrodden beliefs that it's all over, that I can't do any more. Please help me. You owe me. No, no one owes you anything. No. You're not alone. Look to those who care. Let them know you care. And together, you're the first part of what could be an enormous body of people with the same issues. And remember that, same issues. And sports will allow you to reach out and prove to yourself, I can do this. And being an Olympic athlete is one thing, but being an athlete who everyone said you can't make it and you do anyway, that's special. So the gold medal is just something of its own, but the fact that you can get in there and compete and do well when everyone said you're not going to be qualified, you're not good enough. And you went ahead and said, I can do this. The military, the sports come together in such a way that allows us to look to each other and to our friends and see who we can help. And there's a thing that's going on now among the veterans coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. People are saying, don't say to me, don't say to me, thank you for your service. Ask me, how am I? How are you? That's the same thing if you were out there doing all your sports, uh, preparations and someone says <laughs> you know, thank you for working so hard 
No. How about asking where I am, who I am, where my family is? See if maybe I need someone to talk to. We need to know that there is a particular role for an athlete slash military person to play. And that is, as I said, and in the way I'll close this, that is by providing the leadership to do what is right for all and stand up for the weakest among us. God bless you all for caring. God bless you all for coming here with your time to spend it with us. And God bless you for reaching out to those who are reaching in. All right. Good point. This is a special opportunity. And Scott and Lynn, thank you for making this possible. Oh, thank you, bud. Appreciate that. Um, to the Olympians on the, on, on the panel, um, how were you able to train for the Olympics and still survive financially? Yeah. Kelly, you want to take that? <laughs> Go ahead, John. Uh, well, I think it's my, mine's a you know it's good to hear there's other water polo people around here, Paul. Um, but what, I, we're a low profile sport, so it's it's a it's a tough tough sled, tough gig. Uh, we usually go overseas and play professionally if we can, and usually it's if anyone's read the book uh, "Playing for Pizza," but it's something like that where we're we're really kind of just getting by. Um, obviously we have some great support from friends, family, sometimes our communities, uh, we do clinics, we, we try to grow the sport that way. So it's just, it, it's for the love of the game for us, big time and water polo. I mean, I guess, I guess hockey is a little bit of a different situation. Um, you know, I played in the Olympics in the middle of middle of college <clears throat> so i was you know in a college student training with teams playing college teams had support of usa hockey for summer training and those kind of things um so i didn't have to really struggle financially the way a lot of other athletes and other sports did so i guess i was sort of one of the lucky ones just with the structure that that hockey provided yeah can i scott i forgot to answer the question which takes five seconds if you don't mind but you, you want to know how I changed my name to Bud? <laughs> my father's name was Paul. And my father, <laughs> my father wasn't going to be called Buddy. <laughs> he was Paul. And as a result, they called me Buddy. And, and that has stuck in sports and military. People call me Buddy. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what it was. My father said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have a son named Paul and me be called Buddy. I mean, he was a colonel in the army and no, he said, you're going to be buddy. And it's stuck. So. Okay, great. Priscilla, do you have anything to add to that? Um, uh, you <laughs> yes. Um, I was a track and field athlete as a high jumper. And so it was extremely, extremely difficult. And in the beginning of my career in 2014 to about 2016, I felt like I was on the rise. I was doing well, but nope, I couldn't get a, sc a sponsorship to save my life. And it was very interesting because I did get different answers as to why. And whether it was right or wrong, um, a lot of it had to do with um, the people that I knew. I wasn't connected to the right people. Some people said I wasn't because I was darker skinned. Like there was just all these answers that I was getting and it was making me frustrated. And so it was after the Olympics that I realized uh, like I said earlier, I was tired of going out and asking and being like, I deserve this. And I said, I'm going to go out and make a way for myself. So I started my own cleaning business. So I was scrubbing toilets. I was cleaning houses by myself to make a way. And so I was just tired of always asking for permission. And I was just going to make a way for myself. And so um, to the day that I, you know, retired, I wasn't signed. Uh, I had different people who were connected and I would get gear from certain people who heard my story and felt bad. I had my own eyelash company and then I started content creating. And so when I showed people my true self and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be happy. Here's my life. A lot of companies just wanted to partner with me through social media. And that way I do a lot of, um, you know, obviously motivational speaking. And so that's what I did in order to 
get my, you know, make to make my own way. Nobody was handing me checks. I earned every single dollar. I worked for it. And in the end, I was able to learn about business, learn about people, relationships, um, financial literacy, you know, slowly but surely I was just getting smarter just because of the harder road that I had. So I'm not going to say and sit here and say, you know, it was all easy breezy. It was not, it was the most difficult journey, but it taught me the best lessons I ever had. I've ever learned. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, here's a question for Scott Fusco. What made you choose the path away from professional hockey? Do you feel the same passion in your career now and that you had or have for hockey? A lot of veterans struggle to transition into civilian life with this challenge uh, was this challenging for you and your career change? Also, please don't downplay your contribution to society and country. Millions of little people look up to athletes and aspire to be like them. Watching them play gives them hope and gives them dreams to strive for. Uh, that's actually an excellent question. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm glad to try to answer it the best I can. Um, I I've always sort of subscribed to <clears throat> if you do things that you're passionate about, you will be successful at them at some level, depends on how you measure success. So <clears throat> sort of toward the end of my hockey career, I just didn't really have the passion to continue at the level I was playing at. Um, I realized that without that passion, I couldn't truly have the level of, of success that I wanted. At you know, I had opportunities to play professionally, and I just wasn't ready to do that. So I was able to transition into <clears throat> a business career which, you know, after, you know, maybe 20 years of that, I sort of hit, hit the same point. You know, I, I had done, I had done a lot with it. Um, but I, I just wasn't passionate. It's not what I wanted to do for the, I guess, the final chapter of my life. And I was lucky enough to be able to get back into hockey through coaching. Um, and then, you know, some investments were able to build a business around it. Um, and so luckily right now, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about what I do. I, I love coaching. I love being a business owner. Um, at some point, maybe that, that passion will, will go away and I'll probably move on to something else. But <clears throat> my advice would be find something you're passionate about and figure out a way to, to sort of make a living around it. There's lots of ways to do that. And <clears throat> I, I just feel that you'll, if, you, if you follow that path, you'll always be, ha you'll be happy with what you're doing and you'll be successful in a, at a certain extent, of, depending on how you measure that success, you'll ha you'll have success, you'll have happiness, and uh, and you'll be satisfied with what you're doing. Wow. Thank you, Scott. I would just add, if you walk into uh, Scott's very very modest, if you walk into his two ice hockey facility, which is right off of Hanscom Air Force Base, it uh -huh. is a national treasure. Literally, mm -hmm. the ceilings are covered with flags from state and national championships. He brings his teams, the boys and the girls teams, and literally changes their lives. I mean, my daughter is fortunate enough to play on a Division II hockey team at Boston College because of Scott's program. But there are many, many, many other young girls and young men whose lives he's changed. Uh, and so, you know, I've seen the transition of many military people uh, to the civilian life. And I think the question was great, you know, a transition from Olympian to the civilian life. Um, there are, you know, many, many passions people can can have and the amount of lives that he's influenced, I suspect, as amazing a hockey player as he was, and I'm sure he influenced a lot of great co players, the kids lives he's changed forever is is immeasurable. I mean, literally hundreds, if not thousands of kids whose lives have been changed forever in a positive way. Great. I'm a veteran with a cybersecurity degree, but many places want to have additional certifications and experience due to my PTSD. Many employers seem to shy away because they don't know how to handle veterans with a mental illness because of the stigma surrounding it. Any advice? Uh, <clears throat> right veterans advantage or right me. And you will have someone standing by your side. I emphasize that because being alone is a very difficult thing because these are challenges that the people who are there to teach us about, they're just learning. They're just coming into the norm right now. And as a result, reach out, reach out to someone you know will care. And I know one that will care always 
which is veterans advantage. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, once they help you and come up with some solutions, they have the platform which they have created that we are allowed to use to inform other people of how things are going. So don't let this get you down. Just say, I'm not, I'm, I'm not alone. Uh, if they don't know how to handle it, that's their deficiency. I'll be more than willing to talk to them and help them. But you can also put a team together that stands with you already by going to Scott and his team. They can reach out. They can make introductions. They can lead people to a solution. And if you want to introduce them, they're ready for that. They're ready to give you a reference. And that's something that we can all be very grateful for. That's why I thought the most important thing I could do for today was to say thank you to Scott and Lynn. Jason, thanks, bud. I think it's really important for the veterans out there to understand actually it's unlawful to deny uh, employment. Um, so for example, we changed the law in the military many years ago. I work in the national security community for 31 years at the highest level. And I guarantee you that we, we do not allow people to be disallowed for even dealing with some of our nation, nation's most important secrets. Um, we don't allow them their, their clearances to be denied if they are seeking help and assistance. That's point one. Uh, point two is I would encourage you if there is an employment uh, that is not being allowed for you to engage potentially a, a, a labor lawyer. Uh, because it's likely the case that the company's on the wrong side of the law in that case. And the third, I'm not a lawyer, but that's just my mm -hmm. suggestion is ask an expert. And the third thing I would say is that good companies strongly encourage people uh, to, to be explicit about their mental illness. Uh, in our company, we offer uh, professional services for free, for no cost to our employees. And we actively have mindfulness training for all of our employees because everybody can feel depression at some degree, everybody, and, and I'm not discounting the challenges of PTSD. I'm simply saying that this is a, a very important awakening for uh, the, the employers and the employees. So don't shy away from that. It's your right uh, to have the, have the right care, and it's your right to have an employer support you in, in, uh, in, in appropriate employment. Mm -hmm. Very good point. When you leave the military, you become a civilian and often go through a bit of re-entry, re-identity. What is the transition like for elite athletes? And by the way, thanks for your awesomeness. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's very similar for elite athletes. Uh, and you see a lot of, it's, it's been in the news a lot lately of athletes having struggles transitioning from from being an athlete to being, I guess, in the civilian world. <clears throat> we just had a, a, uh, a ex player in Boston that died of a drug overdose, the early thirties, um, played in the NHL for seven, you know, seven, eight, nine years, just got done playing. And apparently the word is he was, he was struggling with the fact <clears throat> he was no longer a hockey player. Um, very successful guy in a lot of ways, but I, I think it's very similar. And, and that's why it's important to, to sort of put that, I guess, once, once, it's, once that door is closed, it's important to sort of put that behind you and open the next door, um, no matter what they may, that may be, because that's going to lead you somewhere in a positive direction. Um, it's, it's hard to want to wanna go back when you have no option to go back. And Priscilla, you recently retired, you know, so. Yes, I just retired in August, and I will say I am very, very much loving food. So don't ever stop eating, guys. Everyone should just eat whatever they want to and enjoy your life. Um, but as before, I knew that this was going to be my last Olympics from two years ago. So I started to prep for that little by little. And so I started reaching out to different people um, that I had networked with for the last eight years. So I would just ask them little tidbits. And my husband, actually, I just asked him to get me the book. I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't, but I'll put it out I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. And it's the transition playbook for athletes. And it says how elite athletes win after sports. And so they interviewed over 100 athletes and 25 Olympians. And it's written by Phil Costa and Rob Curley. And so they just interviewed different athletes and they asked them 25 questions. And what was great is in this book, it gave that like, it tells you guidance, growth, 
resources, books to read, and then all of their info if you want to reach out to them specifically. So I'm going to put the book out there because all these athletes are in very a variety of different backgrounds. Um, and so they've all transitioned into different markets. And so that's what I did. I started reaching out to different people who became doctors and people who became lawyers and financial advisors. And I just asked them, you know, I just DM them and I said, Hey, I'm an elite athlete. I'm about to retire. Can you help me with so-and-so? And the one thing I got from the book was be kind to yourself. I was stressing about as soon as I'm done, I need to get back into it. I need to be successful, but this is a different chapter in my life. So I needed to give myself some kindness, give myself enough time to say, okay, what do I need to do? And kind of go from there. And um, I'm giving myself right now six months to just kind of understand what it's like to actually work and not have to wake up and work out every day, which isn't a bad thing, I will say. But I'm going to put this book in the chat so you guys can all check it out. And I did see somebody else was asking about books. And so um, I'm going to put out some books and some different things that I'm listening to, um, audio books and podcasts, just as much the, I mean, just a general note, there's so much out there, um, podcast wise, book wise, just kind of rather than just focus on the one thing, kind of broadening your horizon and just look at different books because I know one of the questions here was uh, about financial literacy. I was horrible with money. And so I realized that I had to get better. And rather than making an excuse, I had to educate myself and I am not an expert. So I got somebody who was an expert. So definitely go out and get somebody that can help you. That's an expert in finance. It will help you. And it will, it, it will definitely benefit you in the end. I don't ask my mom for help for money because she doesn't know what she's talking about. I need somebody professional. So I would definitely say when it comes to money, get somebody that knows money and has money. That helps too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good uh, response. And that sort of leads into this question that uh, um, one of our participants asked anyone a financial question after my injuries and tbi my memory isn't what it was i have issues saving i'm in a state where tomorrow is not guaranteed so i try and enjoy every day like it's my last however i end up going overboard and spend more than i need to i'm looking for help in saving investing money what have you done what can you recommend for us veterans any other responses on that priscilla offered her uh, advice. Well, I can, uh, uh, let me try this from an entrepreneurial point of view. Um, there is no easy way to these questions of financial security other than to discipline yourself. And sometimes it makes it a lot easier if you have a partner. Uh, this, this is not something if you're married um, and your spouse doesn't wanna share with you what he or she uh, wants to do and you want to you know it, it's better to have a team working together on these things and it's better to ask questions of an outsider to find new advice because you and your spouse just talk to each other always it's not enough you need a little more to get some more diversity um, the other thing that i would say is that don't ever sell yourself short I've had a lot of people say to me, well, you went to Stanford, you got your MBA, you know, that had nothing to do with what I do in business. I made a speech at Stanford saying how wonderful accounting was. And all I got is letters from people saying, you're crazy. <laughs> you need help. Accounting is not a good thing. And I said, yes, it is, because that's the basis for financial analysis. So you can get together with some and do it. They have a lot of it in these digital self-tutored kind of courses. You can get that kind of thing, which gives you the information to talk to others. But the most important thing is don't sell yourself short. If you have ideas, if you have concepts, try them. Just because someone else hasn't tried it already doesn't make you worthless. If you have an idea, at least look at the people today. Priscilla was up there. She shared with us. 
And by the way, to your mother, uh, I didn't agree with what she said. I, I, I think <laughs> you're a wonderful lady. Um, so I, what I really want to put pitch to you is that uh, financial discipline comes and you need help to have someone standing side by side. It's a lot easier. Share your information with each other. Don't try to keep things quiet and secret from a, from a spouse or a friend. Reach out. Don't have any hesitancy to go to your banker and say, I'd like to see what courses you're offering here. But most importantly, I would go back to what I started. Find an organization in the veterans community or the athletic community. The Olympic teams have a tremendous amount of effort in this way to help you transition. Well, the same thing is true in the military. All of the military organizations have transition courses. All of them have things that can help you discipline yourself. But most importantly, whoever you are making your future with, that's the best partner that you can find. Uh, you, I have just a, a couple of suggestions. Um, one is uh, live below your means. Um, number two, um, don't, don't get confused between want and need. Uh, three, um, what, try, to, try to, together with your spouse, look at the future. I'll never forget this. When I was a young military officer, my commanding officer said, you must go and visit a financial advisor. And I said, I'm, I'm not making enough money. I'm barely making my payments. He said, don't care. Your assignment this weekend, visit a financial advisor. So we went to visit the financial advisor and they told us about, you know, dollar cost averaging and interest rates and all kinds of great, great, interesting things. Um, and I, I was I was fascinated to learn. But one of the most important things they they asked us was, are you going to have children? And we said, yes, we love each other. We're going to have children. We were blessed with three. And the next question was, well, how are you going to pay for their college? And we were stunned. We didn't have any children yet. So why should we worry about that? Well, you need to start thinking about that. So I want you to go home and figure out what it's going to cost you. And we went back and we did the calculations, 5% increase in college education. We discovered each of our cute little babies that we wanted to have was going to cost us a million dollars a million dollar baby. Yeah. And we said, I'm earning $13,000 a year. Now I had a, a housing allowance and I had other kinds of things, but I barely had enough money to put food on the table. And I was thinking about hiring, in, bu buying not one, but $3 million babies. So <laughs> my wife and I immediately said, no vacations. Now, we, of course we had a few vacations, but not that many no new cars, we're gonna buy all our used cars. And sure enough, today at 56 years old, I look back to that 21 year old man and young woman who just got married and said, thank goodness we planned for the future together because we would have never made it. And by the way, all three children fully paid college. I have no debt. How is that possible? That's right, that's Discipline. true. Discipline. So plan together, make make a budget, d you know, deny yourself, d live life. You got to live life, right? But the best things in life are free, right? That's what the song says. It is so true. Sleep is free, right? <laughs> is free. A walk is free. Okay, you got to pay a little bit of money if you want to ice skate, as Scott knows. But, you know, but there's also free ice time, right? So you can find things that can satisfy and grow you that don't cost a lot of money. That's my advice. Yeah, and I, I'll just add that at Veterans Advantage, all um, Vet Rewards members have a free financial analysis package. It's If you had to pay for it, it would be about $500. So for those of you who are interested in it, just, just email us and we'll put you in touch with a financial consulting group who will um, give you advice and guidance on where you are right now and where you want to be. There so I had a lot of questions here, and I, 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 I really, we all appreciate very much your time, and, and but also want to be uh, aware that we're sort of drawing to an end here. Um, I wish we could have answered all the questions. There were just dozens and dozens of them, but we appreciate very much the time uh, and effort and advice and guidance that uh, the, the panel has given today. And before we end, we've got a little fun award. Rebecca Martin uh, uh, has a trivia <laughs> question. And uh, the trivia question um, that she's going to ask, the first one that responds um, correctly with the correct answer to the trivia, we'll get 
a Dell computer. There you go. Is that right, Rebecca? Are we doing? Are we That's, giving two Dell computers, or are we giving one to this group? Uh, we can give two. We can give to the first two who have the correct answer. Okay. 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 And, we, and we will we will announce it. All right. So All right. Is, and I'm asking Corey to. Question? Uh, the the okay. Could not, could not answer this question. <laughs> All right. The first question is a little tough, so we'll see how this goes. But the first question we have for you today is, which president received the Medal of Honor? Hmm? No, this is just... I bet Bud knows the answer to that one, but um... let's let someone else guess it. <laughs> Where are we answering was one of the questions you're answering. Uh, we have the we have a correct answer so far. Yeah. We have two correct answers. We have there Andrew. You go. Yes. Okay, uh, so we have Andrew Billy, who got the correct answer, which is Theodore Roosevelt. And right. right after him, Tony Bernard. Oh yeah. So those are our two winners. Okay. And uh can can we hear from those two? Um what branch of service were they in, or can we? Uh... Yes, Roy, you can give them permission to speak, and then they can comment. Do you, they're trying to make someone speak. Our, our two winners who are getting a each of them getting a new Dell computer, and we're getting a number of people coming in here saying thanks so much for your time and answering our questions and just hanging out. Uh, thank you. This is Andrew Billy. Um, I was in the Air Force. Uh, well, thanks, Billy. Andrew. And he he messaged saying, reiterating what many have already said, but thank you all for doing this and joining us and answering our questions and just hanging out. And Sharon Spencer said, P.S., your words of wisdom advice is great. Um, and our our second winner. Tony Bernard. Tony Bernard. Yeah. Tony, you're muted. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks again. Th thanks for uh, everything. It was uh, good information uh, listening today. Uh, I really appreciate it. I too am a veteran, a Navy veteran, uh, 30 years of service myself. Uh, just retired in 2017. Great. And I try to stay engaged with uh, veteran information and resources so that I can share that with other veterans. That's great. Thank you, Tony. Really Thank you. It. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And gentlemen, I will both I will reach out to both of you with the email that you provided for registration to arrange those laptops for you. Okay, great. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to each of the panelists here for joining us today. We appreciate it very much. Have a great day. We'll be in touch. All the best. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you to all.